Dog Gadgets. Live! Inside. Hey, everybody, right, it's hey, Friday! Yay. Woo, confetti uh, effects if we had them. Yeah. Do we have. Pete's probably doing I some fun do, sound effects, which on. I can't hear. There we go. Sound effects. There we go. That's where the real money's at. Oh, sound DJ effects. Airhorn, hold on. <laughs> Right, it's we Friday. We're here. And we're here at Brown Dog Gadgets. As always, I'm Josh from BrownDogGadgets.com. And I'm Doo-doo. not Josh. And that's Pete. They're supposed to be they're supposed to have a <laughs> little Try it again. Ready? There it is. Whoa, there it goes. It's there Friday. Go. What are we doing today? Uh we're hanging out and showing off the coolest thing in our shop because we've got what the, the... <laughs> it's micro bit. Uh we are going to be spending this entire like 20 minutes talking about uh our new prototype boards we've gotten in and been testing out all week if you follow us on social media for some reason thank you thank you very much and also we're sorry that we post so many weird things but we've been testing out these little media oh social media things see pete's on top of this stuff you can find all the fun things here as well as all the projects you'll find today eventually Boom. on browndoggadgets.com because these are prototypes yeah, there you go. Uh, and by the way if you have any questions comments or other random stuff please post them to twitch facebook twitter not twitter maybe a periscope because that's a thing still and we're, we're yeah, streaming all these there things and uh youtube facebook Just typically yell into the void and we'll try to hear you loudly yes it's wisconsin there's not much going on here eh. uh, but we have these really cool prototype microbit boards for a crazy circuit system uh, and we literally, this is a project we've been ever so minorly working on for the past three years. Uh, but finally, we've made like a nearly finished version and have prototypes in hand. We've been testing out with projects. We have, what, six projects on the table here, I think. There's a lot. Uh, yeah, we've basically been putting it through its paces with all our typical sensors, servos, and other fun stuff we have in shop. And seeing can and handle all the stuff we have. And then also kind of figuring out what kind of curriculum and learning materials we want to go with them eventually as we plan out curriculum which we're we'll posting on browndoggadgets.com because right now our poor curriculum uh curriculum man andy is in another office in this curriculum man in, in this area here and uh, he is just hammering away at our arduino curriculum still and once that's done we'll force him to help us write all this stuff but hey enough talking about this let's go look at some stuff up close because that's way more interesting and talk it about is. a couple of boards you want the um, overhead camera yeah let's go to overhead camera. overhead camera yeah. there we so go. if you don't know micro bit that's okay uh, Microbit is this. It's a uh, all-in-one development board uh, put up by uh, the BBC, uh, British BBC. Um, they, they also put out Doctor Who, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so uh, they put this out. This was actually like a continuation of something they did from the 70s where they put out electronics kit, um, which is a similar-esque name to this. And so they thought, hey, let's revive that. And they gave these to – an insane amount of kids around the UK a couple of years back. And it's slowly been making its way across the pond. It's been uh, becoming quite big in Canada and also here in the US. Um, and I totally can see this replacing the Arduino as the next kind of in-classroom development board just because of how simple it is. Now, the cool thing with the microbit is it, it's got a lot on board already. It's got an accelerometer, temperature sensor, magnometer, uh, built-in buttons, an LED matrix. You can easily alligate your clip to the bottom here power what else um it's an accelerometer i suppose yeah. anyway it's got a bunch of stuff built in it's got mm-hmm. bluetooth as well yeah. so you can do a bunch of really cool stuff just out of the box but if you want to do more stuff you can easily alligator clip to it and go to additional uh components or plug it into something like this ta-da and essentially you can end up instead of using three pins on the bottom you can use all 20 something pins to do all sorts of stuff. And there's just a, there's heaps of microbit stuff out there uh, in general. You can go into Amazon and find lots of different types of ad- add-ons, breakout boards like these, um, just all over Amazon just for specific purposes. A lot of them are just very big GPIO pin in and out stuff, mm. uh, plug stuff in, unplug stuff, because sensors and servos are inexpensive. So let's make them easy to use with this, this setup. Now, another really cool thing about the microbit, which is probably one of the biggest selling points, especially for classrooms, is uh, Microsoft has on their website the free Microsoft Make Code, which is a visual drag-and-drop programming interface, uh, which just 
is really nice. It's just really simple to drag in commands and code. Basically, writing JavaScript in a visual format. Is that the right way to put it? Peter? Yeah. Um, yeah. If you've ever used Scratch, uh, kind of a drag and drop, what we call a block-based editor for programming. Um, it, it's a block-based editor, uh, and it's kind of got so you don't have to remember all the functions. It's all kind of built in. You drag it over from a menu on the left, and and yeah, you can also write JavaScript um, in the browser as well if you prefer that. If you need a little more code. You know, typing. Mm -hmm. so it's, so it's, it's really versatile and uh -huh. it, it's just simple. And it's definitely a much more beginner level, entry level friendly format than, say, like throwing an Arduino Uno at a fifth grader and saying code. Yeah. This is very much more kid friendly. Mm -hmm. But it also can do a lot of other higher end things as well with it. And people are writing all sorts of extensions and add ons through the make code format. And we actually use a lot of it for the stuff in front of us. So um, years ago, when we first started Crazy Circuit System, by the way, you can find this board on our GitHub, uh, github.com backslash brown dog gadgets. Yeah. Uh, we put together this very simple, like just test board here for microbit in and out, just to see if you ever wanted to use it. It's just part of our whole, let's see what works with a crazy circuit system as we're prototyping away. And we did a horizontal input here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just how does it work? Is it going to work with our, our Lego based format, brick based format? Do we like it, things about it? Do we not like things about it? And just, it's been sitting in a drawer. I really have been mm -hmm. sitting in a drawer for three years. And we finally had a bit of time here, and so we got our, our butts in gear, and we put together, uh, this is version, uh, well, version two, which is a uh, vertical uh, input, and much more uh, much more uh, feature heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a fully soldered one. We, we're using those for other examples over here. But we just got in. We just got them in. Literally, <laughs> uh, like, on Monday, we got yeah. these in. Uh, Pete, let's go to the close-up camera. Close-up close camera. camera. We can do that. So there we go. So there, that's much better. Uh, you can see what's going on here. We've got our, our micro bit uh, with a 48 pin input uh, so we can out, uh, break out all the uh, various micro bit pins. Mm -hmm. On this side, we've got a relay we built in, which is really handy for activating uh, anything DC. It's basically a way of, of having a microcontroller control dumb DC things like a DC motor or fan. Mm -hmm or mechanical buzzer, just lots of random crud. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you have a bunch of DC crap in your in your classroom <laughs> or home, like we, you know, do electronic stuff, it, it'll work. Uh, you could use like a 12-volt uh, pump, water oh, yeah. pump or something. Yeah, yeah. Because the power is coming, um, like is external, not part of the system. Yeah, you could activate a 12-volt pump off of here. I think it's a smart switch, just yeah. like you might have, oh, I have a you know, Wi-Fi controlled outlet in my house. It's, it's like that. You use logic from the controller, from the micro bit, to just turn a switch on and off, and that none of the power comes I, from that. It comes. I think it's twenty four volts, one amp so is the is, is the, the max. Uh, through that. Okay. So yeah. I forget, but it's way more than what we're going to be using in the classroom. Yeah. Um, what goes right here is a screw terminal block for power in. Mm -hmm. Next to it is a two pin input, so we can use a JST connector, just a, a generic JST connector, mm -hmm. and we put in some um, just in out pins as well, so we can plug in sensors and servos like we have on our other boards. Right. And we'll be using those a lot in the ones we have soldered up pretty heavily. Uh, really, it's pin 1 and 0 for analog, and then 15, 14, 13 for digital pins. Mm -hmm. um, and those are also <coughs> your uh, your SPI bus, I believe. Oh, right? you're, you're correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. It is. I think uh, 0 and 1, I think, might also have capacitive touch as well. Yeah. If you might, want, I mean, yeah. otherwise you can do stuff. And, of course, we've got all of our pins around the outside with mm -hmm. our Lego formatting, 3.3 volt, and um, ground. Oh, also, we do have the relay. It's one relay here. But we have it hooked up to two separate... Um, one pin, two separate connections. So you could yeah. technically hook up two different things with two different power supplies, I believe. I, I, I think know. it's we, one, but... One. And well, we just did this so well, it's, We give you options where you want to connect. It, it really is more for spacing. Yeah. We end up having extra space here. We're like, well, let's yeah. just give them an output here and an output here just to make life easier for everybody. Yep. But another cool thing about these are as well, because as much as I love to hate them, uh, they are alligator clip friendly, and the micro bit is... Let's go to the other view again, Pete. You want to see some overhead? View? Let's go overhead. We can do that, yeah. Uh, so a micro bit is pretty alligator clip heavy. They've got 0, 1, 2, th uh, 3 volt and ground. Mm -hmm. They've got all the little pins in between for all the extra other pins. You're, you're but, not putting an alligator clip on those, the tiny ones. Yeah, the tiny ones. But you, the big <laughs> ones, you totally can. Yes. Um, Ta-da. Mm -hmm. And they're really forgiving because if you're only using 0, 1, and 2, yeah. you're not going to bother with those guys. Yay. But these ones here are also very alligator clip yeah. friendly, as always with our Lego circuitry stuff. Yay, we're connected. Um, so they're super alligator clip friendly for all the extra pins in and out. 
Um, we try to avoid alligator clips as much as possible just because they're alligator clips and they can be, <laughs> I'll tell you, the cheap ones are cheap for a reason. Yeah. They have such very such little amounts of metal in them. They're not great and they're awkward for adults and kids to use, which is why I enjoy maker tape. I, I've had them either just pop apart, disintegrate in my hands pretty much, or I've had, especially kids, they just can't grip it like it's slippery. Oh, no. And yeah. now sometimes it's hard to use. Yes, indeed. It's just they're not great. We include them in our kits because they're great. handy for really connecting to conductive paint and mm -hmm. and conductive dough. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the reason we throw them in some of our kits. But so there's a lot of things going on in here. We took an approach that was different from a lot of other people. I mean, you'll see microbit um, boards ranging from super simple, just a simple temperature sensor that you can alligator clip over to, all the way up to every single pin has a three-pin header like this. Mm -hmm. um, just big spine of them. Ones that have built-in NeoPixels, piezo speakers like the whole kitchen sink they build in yeah. everything into one board so if you're a kid or an adult trying to learn a system all the parts are already on there they're labeled you know piezo speaker is pin 14 mm -hmm. uh, a little dc motor hooked up to a relay is pin 19 and those can be nice but they're also kind of an all-in-one system and we want to have people do a little more creating like creative stuff with it we yeah. can actually break things out into these fun lego format and using our awesome nylon conductive maker tape maker to hook things tape. together so enough of me talking. Let's actually show you these these activities. Yeah. Uh, not activities. These uh, demos. Demos that uh, Pete and I have been putting together the last couple days. Mostly Pete. I've been trying just yeah, I've been trying stuff out. Pete's been actually making these. So let's start with um, simple. Let's start with LEDs. I literally have like six of these here. So <laughs> we're just trying to get everything. Yeah, pushing them off the table. <laughs> so there we go. All right, so this is just, uh, Pete, this is just a bunch of buttons and a bunch of LEDs, correct? It really is. I really just wanted to hook up a bunch of stuff, um, inputs and outputs. So the whole front of the board is those inputs. The whole back is the output with the LEDs. So this is what this guy is. So, so the last two are alternating oh. uh, every other one, and then the others are just uh, keyed to a LED. And it's a little, the studio lights are a bit uh, bright yeah, here, but you I can, you can see, see our white LEDs popping up. Um, but this is just, yeah, very basic. This was the testing out all the pins. Are the yeah. pins where they're supposed to be and connected appropriately test? But also, we have all this maker tape on here, this really nice big circuit board you've made yeah. of LEDs <laughs> and push buttons. It is. It's it a was, circuit board. It was for me to practice with the tape. Now, Josh, the last two buttons, if you do them back and forth, alternate, you get a little light chase going. Whoa. <laughs> it's a hidden feature. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is a, just 20 minutes of this. We're gonna yeah, well, today. we could. We got time, right? I got bills to pay. Anyway, <laughs> paperwork, always paperwork on Friday. So <laughs> just using a bunch of LEDs. And this is a nice way. Yeah, LEDs are easy. They're simple. They're, mm. yay. So, yeah, just trying that out. And clearly, yeah, that's a, if we're doing all of these, like this many, that's a lot of uh, amperage. Thank goodness our LEDs all have built-in resistors they in them. They do. Right, right. Oh, yes, because we go the extra mile with our LEDs. Yeah. Take that generic LEDs that are easy and common and cheap. <laughs> and we have a ton of them. So yeah, this right. is just a bunch of LEDs on there with the micro bit. Simple. All of our in and out in and outs work. So we're gonna put yep. this on the ground because we have a lot here. Alright. Uh, Pete took it a little further. We'll see if this will get picked up with a microphone. So I've been posting a couple uh, videos of this on our social media accounts. Josh, we've got our first question here. Is the board available? Oh now? Jackie! Hey Jackie. Jackie, thanks for watching. We appreciate you coming by. Jackie, that's a good question you've asked. So this board is not available yet. This is just our, literally our prototypes. This is our 99% sure this is what we want prototypes mm -hmm. um, before we get things into production. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that these will be done here this fall. Things have gotten all thrown out of whack because of COVID-19 <laughs> has thrown business stuff just uh. out the door. Um, so, and most of our, our sales go through our education resellers who were asking for stuff like this, uh, specifically micro bit things with a curriculum attached. So we have to go back and like, Hey guys, you're still going to buy this. So we put this stuff into production. Um, but we do plan on, on really this fall, unless something weird happens, get these into production and have these ready for sale and really end of summer, fall. Um, it's like six to 10 weeks for us to get boards in. And, uh, right now it's testing these out, spreadsheeting things out, and putting together kits that are appropriate, mm -hmm. um, that both a single user kit and then a classroom kit. But uh, these will also be an open source option as well. If yeah. you're somebody who wants to buy like something right away or make your own or do your own variation on this, say you want to do something completely different but in the same basic format, we will put this up on our GitHub account as, as well as all the other stuff we have is up there already. 
for people to you know download and make their own. But it'll be cheaper to buy it through us because we're mass producing it. Mm -hmm. And really, the expensive thing is the micro bit. Everything else on here is fairly inexpensive, uh, relatively speaking. So so coming soon is coming is soon. Coming Brown soon. Brown Dog com. If you'd like right. to keep up to date on things, please follow us on one of our many social media accounts. Do do. Those as well. Yeah. Need like that uh, that. Windows chime or something. <laughs> Doo -doo. I've got a good chime over here. It's the glockenspiel. So. Okay. Uh, so, of which, let's turn on this guy here. So, this fall, and we'll have stuff, uh, kits and other things this fall with other components as well, as well as the board by itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is a simple piano. Notice it says Funky Town at the bottom <laughs> for a reason. Because, like all of our musical projects with Arduino, we put them in the appropriate key to play the song Funky Town by Lips Inc., Impressive. Oh yeah. Do do do. Got to take you to Funky <laughs> Town. It's great, All right. It's a uh, great hate, song. I know. I hate to interrupt you. We've got another question here. Ooh. Mm. Yes, Jackie. So here's the thing, Jackie. Email us because <laughs> this is so close to being done, and we have a pretty good idea what's going to be in the kits and where we're going to be going with our curriculum. Because the thing is. We want curriculum for this as well, so that if you as a classroom teacher is like, hey, we want to use this in the classroom, it's just not, here's parts, have fun, which is right. kind of the go-to thing with a lot of the microbit boards. They're, they're nice, but it's a lot of figure it out. Yeah, We're inexpensive, which is great, but check, find out your own curriculum and whatnot. We want to make sure that we have directions, we have step-by-step -step guides, we have worksheets, we have activities, things building each other, so that you can just have the kids go full steam with it, and... Yeah, do your own thing. So that's why we have Andy, the curriculum writer, in another office here. Because, yeah. Um, yeah. And the tech specs will be up soon. We'll, we'll have all the tech specs up there because it's just it's a micro bit with, with extras on there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we'll have a, a nice little – we always have little tech spec cards that have all the pinouts and whatnot on them that we include with mm -hmm. our all of our kits. So quick reference guides. Yeah. And, and again, things we're going to be working on between now and the time we release things. Uh, it's a lot of that nuts and bolts, gritty graphic design videos. Yay, kind of stuff. But push buttons, piezo speaker, pretty simple. Um, now, the cool thing about Microbit is, too, you can actually output to, like, a set of speakers, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of cool, too. Um, we actually just got in the mail from Amazon today, a little, like, mono headphone, like, two wired to just a headphone plug-in jack. Um, we could use then one of our screw terminal. We have a screw terminal apart for crazy circuits. Use that as an adapter or just tape, tape over the ends, because mm -hmm. that's a really quick way of doing things tape um but then you know i'll put that to like a speaker so you could say play funky town loudly yeah. um especially like little powered speakers like computer speakers you can get those for 10 12 dollars on amazon we use them with our sound wall but then just loud and you can you know program in melodies and notes and other mm -hmm. things to it no different really this is no different than like the piano tie we made ages ago an actual working piano tie or the sound wall we've done in the past or conducted paint piano just the same basic idea just micro bit format and yeah. yeah, and this is just easy with the piezo speaker. And again, I really like the fact that kids have to wire stuff up so they see how it's all connected. Mm -hmm. This is pretty easy. And Pete wired all this up. I'm like, why are you taking all these push buttons I taped from the warehouse? it all up. Yeah. Is this just one big piece of tape along the bottom? <laughs> Pete, did it actually connect that way? Uh, yeah. Or I thought, or the, <laughs> yes. Okay, I was wondering because our spacing on the holes is uh, you can fit, you need, they fit loosely without any tape underneath them and they snap down on top of the tape and the yeah. tape is really what keeps that uh, pressure fit in there and depending on which production run we have <laughs> um, there's a little bit of variation in those holes uh, but you can occasionally I do like run one piece underneath and get everything in there if you work it incorrectly but this is way more than you'd have most kids do you'd have a couple notes yay yeah. so yeah this is a pretty good example of doing sound in a very simple format and wiring things up with micro bit mm -hmm. so yay so we'll put this back on the ground. We're going to keep right. going for Jackie. So let's do um, let's do this. Let's do the relay. Oh, yeah, relay. We're going to get these these guys over here. Ah, uh, stuff galore. That's why we have lots and lots and lots of Lego boards around. So We're relay. running out, though. I've been using a lot this week. Oh, uh, we got to clean up around <laughs> here. So this is us hooking up a simple relay. This is a coin cell battery to provide the power for the fan and a push button to activate the relay to turn it on and off. Now... Oh, God, turn this on first. We have a status light here for a reason mm -hmm. on our board as well, so we know that power is flowing. 
ta-da, I'm running a DC fan off of this. And I can run, up, uh, I think, up to a 24-volt fan at one amp as long as I have a, a power supply to go with it. And we have a little one of our vibrating motors over here, too, Pete just taped down. Yeah. Now, but Josh, what we could do, instead of that push button, we could use, like, the temperature sensor. Ooh. And when it gets too hot, the fan would turn on. And that's where the real fun with a relay happens. Yeah. Like, you have a light sensor that when it gets dark enough in the room, it clicks on, like, a desk lamp. Yeah. Or, as Pete said, it gets too warm, a fan turns on. Mm -hmm. um, I always like the projects where it's, like, the automatic fish feeder. Oh, yeah. Where it's, uh, or the plant watering. When the soil gets to a certain dryness level, mm -hmm. servo kind of you know, servo turns, water goes down for, and just super simple cause and effect. Yeah. And this is what a relay is really good for. And yeah, you can just control DC things, but it's way more fun. You hook up with a sensor, right? And again, the microbit has some built-in sensors, but we can also plug in more sensors thanks to our our pins over here, which mm -hmm. we'll be getting to in a moment because we got like four more things, three or four more yeah. things. But yeah, this is. Relay is great, and uh, we really wanted to put that in there because it's one of those things we could definitely see uses for in the classroom, even if like there's n yeah nobody really gets to it typically. There's a lot of uses for like end consumers, like higher end kids in the classroom after school programs where they can do more complicated things. Now, if you want to go even further, you can literally buy like AC relays as well. Yeah, those are really common for Arduino projects. Turning on like a lamp in a room, um, or turning on, like the lamps we have here. Light gets to a certain level, it clicks on. Yeah. It, it, easy stuff. Um, really simple, well-documented things. But this is just simple turn-on fan. Because you could not run this fan off the power in here. You'd oh. either, one, destroy the micro bit or wouldn't have enough power. Right. Or both. Um, or nothing would happen. And you're like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. And so you need this. This is the battery's powering it, not our USB. USB is going to micro bit, but it's just saying... Relay, turn on and off. And a relay is really, it's a, it's a yeah. switch, but because we have the controller, it's a smart switch. Mm -hmm. It's got a brain, so we're controlling it with logic. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's handy to do. And I, haven't, I don't play with relays very much, but Pete here, oh, I you, um, <laughs> Pete is a very artistic guy. Um, you said artistic, right? Artistic, okay, yes. Thanks. Arty. You, you, uh, I can see Pete like usually with like a ponytail, those dark glasses <laughs> in the 90s, no. sketchbook. Um, no. Yeah, uh, so I went to a, uh, an installation, an uh, art installation when you, uh, with a bunch of your, your students. Sure. Where he had a bunch of incandescent bulbs and doing different lighting effects. Just a string, like strung all over. Yeah. And it was hooked up to, was an Arduino mm -hmm. that was controlling it or a different microcontroller? That was, oh, uh, you're talking about, uh, Max, one of my students did that. I oh, think, it was one of your students, um, okay. He did that with a uh, beagle board, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the funny thing was, you could totally hear the relays clicking on and oh, off because yeah. the AC relays, it's a physical click you hear on yeah. the inside. You just hear that click, 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 click as all these lights were doing these effects. Um, but it's really, really cool. Well, Josh, you know, I did build the world's largest LED cube, which was at Maker Faire, which had 27 relays clicking constantly. Oh. For the See, I never le leave the booth at the Maker Faire. Oh, so. oh, is there Damn another question? question? Oh, yeah. Oh, hold Jackie, on Jackie's here. back. Yeah, she's got a Jackie, comment. we love you, Jackie. Yes, it would totally mm -hmm. be. That's literally, that's the reason, Jackie, right there yeah. is the exact reason why I put a relay in here for people like you. It's like, toys, why not kids' toys? Yeah. You're the reason we put it on there because we may come up with really bad ideas, but people like you, Jackie, will come <laughs> up with good ideas and do something with them. Uh, so we're going to put this aside. So that's the relay. And again, we've got John, John, John Chavon, we, Chavon, I believe. John is our, our, our one of our most frequent yeah. watchers. We love you, John. I, he might be Watcher of the Week, Viewer of the Week. We, we should have like Watcher of the Week. Um, <laughs> Snoop, anyway, uh, but yeah, we put the, it's one relay, but we have those, the two different options for the in and out, mm -hmm. just because, again, we had extra space, so we're like, yeah, let's give them options for hooking things up. Totally. So anyway, this is why we're testing stuff out heavily. We're going to put this to the side. To the side. Uh, let's go over here. Ah, so this is a, a naked board. It's not on Ooh. Lego. This is a full one where I did the soldering of um, the screw terminal, the pin headers, and whatnot. And this is a fairly standard distance sensor. It's what we use in some of our uh, other kits we have. Mm -hmm. And this is a seven-segment display. And these are fairly common. You'll find these in our Arduino kits on Amazon. They're inexpensive sensors, and, but they're really handy because they're super well-documented. People have done all sorts of pro projects with them. They're used in many different formats. They're just kind of the go-to standard. Well, we wanted to say, hey, if you don't have a sensor for your micro bit, I'm turning things. And Josh, out. you know what the nice thing about those? Those are contactless sensors. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they want, are. If you don't want to touch anything. But it's hard Ooh. to see with this. Actually, I wonder if you can do the close-up view, if we can actually close see this up on the close-up. Close-up view. Let's switch over to that there. 
Put it right there, yeah. over there, that, the other, there, there we, we go. go. Kind of see it. So we can, uh, it's a short. Describe what's yeah. happening. To While us. describing <laughs> great detail, that's enough of that. Good times. Thanks, little I'll Logitech camera. All right. So what we did here was just hook up this seven segment display. It's four pins and this distance sensor four pins. And this is just showing the distance in centimeters. My oh, hand yeah. is away. Ta-da. So you could trigger anything based on, again, that logic of yep. reading how far something, like a fan yeah, or, a, or a desk lamp. Or a piezo speaker. Like or a it's the little brother alarm. Ooh. You know, yeah. distance sensor, you know, triggers because somebody walk past it. Uh, and a piece of speaker starts buzzing, like warning, like your brother's in your room trying to steal your thing. Right. I, I have no brothers, so it'd be a, 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 a little sister alarm. You could warn me. the cat or the dog if they get too close to something, I guess. I mean, a cat wouldn't Wee! care. Just be like, eh, they'll <laughs> knock this off the table because they're cats. That's where you use the fan. Cute and blow some air in their face. A squirt bottle. Arr, Automatic yeah, squirt, squirt bottle. bottle. There you go. Because some cats don't like that. But anyway, some this don't. is just um, trying the in and outs and trying this yeah. with the Microsoft Make code because these are all. Bo I should say both documented well in the Microsoft Make Code. I didn't do any work because I'm a horrible coder. <laughs> well, I just make code like, oh, people have done the work. Here's where we connect these things Extensions, together. Extensions, right? You just add an extension, yeah. and you drag it in, and you're good. It was really simple. Yeah. It was like, oh, that's. I was trying to make it too complicated because I'm like, it can't be uh -huh. this easy. What am I doing wrong? Right. Um, but it's really simple to do. Whereas opposed to an Arduino, you have to type the code in, or copy like what I do, copy and paste the code in, and do some yeah. modifications. Um, but we literally have this project with our Arduino code do with our uh, robotics board, which is yeah. a very similar format. You got pins in and out and Arduino on on it as well. This is just through the uh, the micro bit. Now you could also do the same kind of thing with this uh, display using other sensors because I was using the built-in accelerometer to throw data to here, as well as the built-in um, has an ambient gyroscope. temperature oh. thermometer, oh, yeah, it, yeah. which works okay. Um, not as well as some other ones, but it works pretty yeah. well. Just to throw information here is just, oh, change this variable, drag in temperature, mm -hmm. drag in accelerometer data, and it's just showing up on here. So this little display is a great way of doing things. Now we're talking about other good classroom uses because I like it when kids can build their own tools for classroom use or you have a tool that's clearly built by a student. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of the things we like, we've used in the past is a uh, like waterproof temperature probe which is really easy. It's three wires. You have to add a resistor between two of them. Um, but you could easily plug that in with your temperature uh, mm -hmm. coming out of here and use that for chemical reactions or for sticking outside of a window or you know, just as a great, we made our own thermometer. Yeah. This is how it works. Especially I like, it, like for doing chemistry, seeing if it's an exothermic or endothermic reaction. Mm -hmm. Baking soda vinegar. Throw a temperature probe in there. How cold did it get? Because it'll... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it gets We've got another chilly. comment. What's a question? Yeah. Christopher! <laughs> it's, it's Friday, and uh, Chris, Christopher, CS, do you, I don't do know. Because do <laughs> I have yet to submit this to our manufacturer. You don't know, yeah. Um, that's the big kicker. It depends on how much it costs to have them make this. And seeing that our volumes are only maybe a couple thousand at a time, this is where you going to our resellers and saying, hey, Who's buying this this fall? Can we get up to like 2,500 units? Right. Um, that's where that, you know, 1,000 to 2,500, there's a good price break. Up to, we're not going to be able to get up to five, that's for sure. But it's just finding out how much it is and doing spreadsheets like tariff, uh, wonderful DHL shipping fees because thanks to uh, COVID-19, yeah. there's extra cost in shipping. It's pretty much doubled any packages that come airmail, and we're not waiting the 100 days plus for something to come by boat. It's just, it's silly. Um, but yay, yay, importing. Never thought I'd be doing that yeah. with my teaching degree. Importing things from Asia. <laughs> I'm an importer, exporter. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe like $20. Um, 15 to 20 is kind of like your standard micro bit range. Maybe 25. It, I just looked all over on Amazon. Like, what are other people charging for yeah. a similar-esque micro bit board? And 25 would be kind of on the high end. Um, some of you, yeah, between 15 and 25 for this guy without the micro bit. Because right. we're kind of assuming people... If you're doing micro bit stuff, you probably have one already. Um, a lot of schools we've talked to, they don't want the micro bit. They just want the stuff that goes with it. Uh, so you know, in between from 15 to, to 25, we're just trying to yeah, figure that out because it really is pretty simple. It's just getting those quotes and dealing with all those wonderful other things. So you have to make some money off yeah. of it. Um, even if we are going to sell it fairly inexpensive by itself because for us, we, we make money off the big kits selling all the components, our crazy circuits, parts, and whatnot with it. Josh, we got another another uh, question. Another from Christopher here. 
He wants a Funky Town keyboard. Well, Christopher, <laughs> if you want to make your own Funky Town keyboard, you can literally make your own right now with an Arduino, make the exact same project with our uh, with like our, our, our kits. You can buy the parts a la carte off our website, push buttons. Um, if you want to actually save a lot of money, I kid you not, if you want to really just... I say this as somebody who oh, I'm now I'm kicking things as I'm stretching my legs. Thanks, cameras. If you want to make the, that, that project super, super cheap, you could literally make that on paper using um, one of our oh, robotics yeah. boards and a cheap piezo speaker just off of Amazon or buy our piezo speaker part. It's not that much more expensive. And then just use tape on paper and make paper switches. And it'll yeah. work well. Um, we also have our invention board with this capacitive touch. So that is even easier. You don't have to make switches. You just you just tap to, to do that. You can yeah. use conductive paint or dough or any conductive material or you tape, have. Tape, conductive tape. Yes, like our wonderful conductive tape, browndoggadgets.com. Yeah, there you go. Uh, or, you know, again, balls of aluminum foil to mm-hmm. activate that. We have like a, a, a conductive paint piano we take to trade shows, which is just eight keys. And it's just a little bit of conductive paint. We made a super easy stencil with our laser cutter. Um, but then, yeah, it's just eight keys. You touch them, it plays, plays notes. Um, so if you want to say make that, there's a lot of ways of doing it. So it would cost you know anywhere from a couple dollars up to like fifty dollars, depending on your configuration. Heck, mm-hmm. we made a piano tie. <laughs> we made a freaking piano tie um, using conductive tape, one of our invention boards, and a cruddy cheap piano tie that's just all capacitive. You can literally play your tie. I was going to wear it to a fancy black tie event <laughs> that my wife goes to every year for uh, at her university where she helps out with alumni stuff because it's fun and be like, look, my piano tie. Was she okay with that? Uh, COVID canceled that. Oh, I was very sad. Shame. It was like the last year she was going to be wow. doing the alumni stuff there. Wow. But uh, specifically because it's silly, it's a piano tie, but actually it's a working piano tie. But there's a lot of ways doing the same project. So um, anyway, that's this. Yay, Christopher. Awesome. Thanks for the awesome. That's Thumbs right. Thumbs up, Christopher. <laughs> it's Friday. What else we got? Uh, literally throw this across the room. No, don't. Uh, let's go with we have actually two more things oh, sure so we're gonna go with this guy because pete was working on this this afternoon which well, again this is why we do things troubleshooting out will this work or not now i don't need to do this so we added pin headers on the back end to use um, a battery pack input because if you're um if you want to make a project that stands by itself like your little brother detector or a piano you take around your your house and play notes to people you could <laughs> use a usb power bank those are cheap and easy this is one from years ago Brown dog, yeah, just dot com. Oh, yeah. We made some with our name on it years ago. <laughs> so the few I have left. Um, or you could just plug in a two AA or two AAA battery pack. Ta da! Yeah, that works fine. Or run it through the pins here, the the ground and the uh, the three volt. So Pete was trying to figure out servos with this because servos are great. These are Lego compatible servos that we have. That is a two seventy degree. This is a continuous rotation. They're both on our website, and this is a thumbstick that we use in some of our other kits. I give you motion. Wow. And light. And light. Uh, you can't, it's hard to see. Uh, I'll show you, uh, change the direction here. But this is a NeoPixel, one of our NeoPixel boards that came in a few weeks ago. And it's changing color based on direction. Yay. Because we want to try out the and, NeoPixels as well. And what else is happening? Oh, there? go, go, go get there. Hold your horses, Pete. <laughs> Very proud. So there's the array of LEDs in the front of a micro bit. Yeah. You can display information, some information. Arrows Ooh, pointing left and right. Look at that. You know which way it's going. And that's like built into Microsoft Make Code too. Yeah. Show arrow. It's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we want to make sure that it worked out. And we were running into some issues where servos draw a lot of power because they're a motor. And I think the USB input off of here, we looked up the, <laughs> just before this, we were looking up the power inputs and outputs. And uh, I think it's like 120 milliamp can go through the USB mm-hmm. port on here. It's not very much. So that's where having your external power, because then the power is, coming from here a pretty high amount of amperage to both this and the board so powering the board and the servo ta-da and we can do this and we also test out too can we plug in the usb for data and also have the power pack plugged in so we could easily change our code up and then also have power for our servo you know, to unplug and replug things over and over again that's annoying um and it was seemed to work just fine we yeah. couldn't find data that said we shouldn't do that it looked like we should um <laughs> but we wanted to use some um Nice, uh, the, the red JST connectors, the kind that you find um, for um, hobby cars. Mm-hmm. These guys. 
They're just yeah. big, solid, quick pin. Because the little tiny ones, I'm never a fan of these little tiny JST connectors. Yeah. Because I know as an adult, I yank things out by the wire, <laughs> even though you should be yanking it out by the head. Pete's laughing because we <laughs> all do that. Do that. Like, everyone does it. Like, oh, I should pull the plug out of the I wall by it. like at I the know, spot. Like, no, just yank. People are lazy, and kids especially don't know any better. So I want to make sure we have these nice big JST connectors so they're easy to grip. And that's why we have these big pin headers that should be right here. So you can easily – well, it's on one of the other boards. It's on the next one. Uh, yeah. Is it? Oh, it is. Yeah, it we'll is, show that yeah. one. Uh, yeah. And it, it's easy to plug in and out. And we also can – you can screw terminal things in there too. Use a screw terminal with a battery mm-hmm. pack or other power. Yay. Um, but we want to make give, give people options. Um, make things easy. And we had a little space there. I'm like, well, let's – make this easy so we can really expand things out and again for classroom use this is easy to just plug in and unplug yeah. versus screwing things in yeah and also see i didn't solder things on here but i was using it because the uh the pin headers for all the servos and whatnot here they have a, a positive and negative and in and out they do so i can just plug that into there as well to get power which is an extra spot if you need to plug more things in but yeah thumbstick works fine and these thumbs oh, by the way these thumbsticks are awesome because they also have a they have a button in the middle a button yeah which i don't know if you can hear or not you can actually hear that click of the button if you want to wire another button like yeah here's a button so you can left right click yeah uh, so you can do some fun stuff and we want to make sure too as well that we can power more than one servo if we're doing some projects servos are great especially with all the sensors we have because i know we were talking like what can we do with a sensor and a servo output you could use this um as a uh, with a chart to show the temperature, like they'll just have mm-hmm. a sliding temperature gauge. Yeah. Um, same thing with uh, like the magnometer, always point north. Yeah. Always point in the same direction. You can, um, what other sensors do we have? I'm running out of, oh, distance sensor again, pointing mm-hmm. uh, chart back and forth. There's a lot of things you can do with the servo. We want to make sure we could both power it and other devices at the same time or more than one servo because Pete's been making um, some very fun Arduino based Lego autonomous rovers i say autonomous rovers they avoid walls <laughs> yes um, but again powering two servos an arduino and a sensor that takes a bit of power he's been using small usb power banks but being able to use a power supply like this mm-hmm. that's pretty easy to do yeah. so we want to make sure we have that option and also neopixel check it works just fine yeah so all right so we're actually doing with a micro bit i'm going to move on to something similar yet different than this because drum roll we don't have Oh, I bet there's you you probably a drum roll sound effect in the, our software. Uh, I'll do party noisemaker. Oh, even better. <laughs> Yay. Um, that, that looks like a mic, but I don't it know. Is, it is, but it isn't. What? No. This is the uh, Adafruit Clue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I'm going to see if I can focus on it. <laughs> there we go. Focus. Focus. So the Adafruit Clue is a micro bit on steroids. Um, Adafruit's just, I think, just on their first production run of this. Mm-hmm. Um, we got one because... They like us. They, they sell our bristle bots, and we would love to have them pick up these products huh. that we're eventually putting together. But it really is. It's a uh, micro bit on steroid with a color screen, a bunch more sensors, a um, bunch more options, a lot more power to behind it for not that much more money. I think it's $30 versus the eight of the uh, micro bits, like 18 to 20 Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's a kick butt little board. So it, it also has the same pin out as the micro bit. It looks identical, yeah. really, the way the pins are hooked up in the bottom. Because Adafruit really wanted to make sure that their board can work with all the different it's pin accessories. compatible, yeah. I think, is the term they use. Yeah, you have yeah, a bunch yeah. of microbit accessories already. Plug a clue in. Mm-hmm. It'll work just fine, which is really cool at Adafruit to do that. Good marketing. Uh, and it, it, yay. Um, so we wanted to use this as well because we have one. And Pete hooked it up to this servo. Now, Josh, I programmed the clue board with... Um, Circuit Python. Yep. Instead of the make code thing. And that's the other big one. If people are into Circuit Python, which yeah. Adafruit's really pushing hard, and good Pi- for them. Python is a great language for beginners. People have never written code. It's it's very readable, uh, easy to get into. There's a million tutorials on getting started with Python. So, yeah. uh, you know, Circuit Python is a, a subset of it. So what we're using here is um, it's a little bit of a distance gesture sensor on the front of here, mm-hmm. and all we're doing is moving the servo based on what's in front of it and if i tilt this up a bit it's actually running you can see the yeah the distance so on the front the there, on there. Yep. the distance data is literally in real time being posted there which is really cool actually the default code on here is really nice because you turn mm-hmm. it on and it just has a screen that shows all the different sensors giving data yeah. at once and you can just move it back nice. and forth and see the accelerometer move it's like wow this screen is really nice we had ken yeah. burns from tiny circuits on yesterday they have a little tiny tv with a really nice um display and it reminded me very much of this just mm-hmm. a smaller version of that 
But a good color screen is really cool because you could then output all the data from all of these sensors and whatnot yeah. onto there. Oh, do we have any it's other questions? Cool. No, we just uh, had the awesome that Chris said. That Chris, was the last one. Chris, thanks for being awesome. We had a lot today, awesome. though. Yeah. That's, that's more than we usually yeah. have. <laughs> it um, is. Yay. But yeah, so this is uh, the Adafruit Clue running on Office Board because there's no reason it shouldn't work, mm -hmm. but because, you know, it's it's pin compatible. And actually, we're going to do this. I'm going to take this puppy off since there's no tape hooked up. That's, Let's that's go to not a puppy, Josh. Hmm, puppies. <laughs> Um, and we're just going to unplug this and let's go to the close up view again. Close -up and view. we'll show like a finished board mm -hmm. if I can ever, which should mask out where stuff is. Right. Um, but here's like what a finished one would appropriately look like or the final version would look like. Um, we've got our, our screw terminal, which will be black in the final version. Uh, I didn't have any black on hand, so I got on a blue one. Um, you've got your, your right angle header for power and then the the pins on here for plugging in those sensors and servos. Mm -hmm. And typically, um, most sensors and servos are either three or four pin. Um, most of those cheap Arduino ones, like the distance sensor is four. Two of them are power, two of them are, are data. Mm -hmm. um, the the thumbstick is four. Um, so really, I mean, you could hook up a distance sensor, a servo, and the thumbstick, and you'd be fine mm -hmm. on here. I mean, yeah. it's plenty of, five is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to go further than that, there's better boards uh, with just nothing but those <laughs> pins. Yeah, just every single pin is a pin out. Um, I just say some of them have like nicely colored ones. It's something I'll have to look into too. Oh, yeah. You can actually get um, colored. Um, color instead of black yeah. plastic, it's like colored. You have like your red, your yellow, and yellow. your black, yeah. which would be really cool to have yeah. to see if our, if our manufacturer is not going to charge us both an arm <laughs> and a leg for that. Um, but it would be really cool to have that because it's this nice visual format. Which it is. Our Arduino boards are for a little older, a little bit older crowd. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a bit younger crowd, but that's a nice one. Little little touches, and of course the, the board's gonna be green in the end. Yeah. Um, but this is yeah, hand soldered surface mount parts on here, and there's nothing on the bottom because why would we have anything on the bottom? <laughs> um, but maybe we'll add something to the bottom. We're gonna add a version number on the bottom, Pete. Oh, that's and a also good a idea. warning. 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 Do not eat. Do not ingest. And then we had a couple of things we want to put like warning. Do not do this and this, just good as idea. little notes. But right. Um, yeah, that's it. This is this is our board, which um, we're I'm really happy it turned out well. We've been let's go back to the overhead here. Uh, we yeah, we're kicking around this idea for ages. The yeah. clue and the micro bit are not that another micro bit. Oh, here There's it is. There's one there. Yeah, and here's a clue next to the micro bit, one we just got literally out of the box off of uh, Amazon yesterday. What I like is you you know you can certainly you start with the micro bit, and then if you want to do more crazy stuff or learn more or jump into Python, you get the the clue and you go from there. And I, I'm I'm guessing that Adafruit's gonna because of Adafruit's clout and their good standing in the world, <laughs> um, that they're gonna probably end up getting something going on with Microsoft for their Make Code, because um, mm. the Circuit Python, uh, sorry, it's the Circuit Playground. Yes, is up on Make Code, and I would imagine that this would be a similar thing, yeah, um, as well up there. Because why not? It, then it's an easy transition. You use the right. visual format for the the uh, the micro bit, and then you just easily transition up to the clue when you're ready. Mm -hmm. You have the accessories are the same. You just get yourself up to a bigger board for doing bigger projects. Because yeah. um, Ken yesterday in our, our interview with Ken from Tiny Circuits, um, their tiny TV just it plays little video clips on it, which yeah. is really cool. Uh, and I was like, it'd be really cool to like you know. It's kind of the hit a button, play a GIF or something, or play yeah. a video clip. Yeah. Hit this button for like a sad trombone, or you know, you got you know Picard going make it so. <laughs> yeah, with a little, you could probably hook up a little uh, speaker yeah. or whatnot nice. to it, and especially yeah, you, you can do like mono out off of it or something. Yeah. And you'd be good to go. Um, make it so. Yeah. Uh, and so then I just, tell, so I tell my sewing machine every day when I sit down at it. I, I say. Uh, I, we used to have a print. Oh, is that the makerspace? Is that the Milwaukee makerspace? There's yeah. a, in the sewing area, which was very nice, nice like uh -huh. craft area. Uh, Picard with Make It Sew S E W. Yeah, Josh, I made that. Did you? Yes. <laughs> of course you did, Pete. <laughs> Whenever something cool is at the makerspace, he's like, that. I made that. Because Pete is the makerspace. You're welcome. No. Pete's I'm a, not. No. No. You're, wel you're welcome. No. It's just a very smug. You can't see I've been there in so months. So smug. I haven't been there in months, Josh. <laughs> Me either. No, no one's been there in months. Anyway. It's true. <laughs> Actually, oddly enough, the same amount of social interaction is happening now <laughs> as when there were people there. Stop. Oh, stop. I, no, I joke. Come I used on, to, stop. I will say, I like the Milwaukee Makerspace. I used to go there and do all my laser cutting. It's when I, when I was still teaching, and my business kind of got started using equipment at the Milwaukee Makerspace. Yeah. My wife and I met through Pete, <clears throat> who knew yeah, us both from the Makerspace. Makerspace. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, I don't think either of us had been there in 
in years. All right, we're diverging again. Yeah, anyway. Yes, PC to keep us Micro bit. Micro Clue. bit. Clue. This great board. Lego. Crazy circuits. I'm knocking things Boom. over. So you to answer, what? again, to I rehash, browndoggadgets.com. Right right uh, Jackie, com. and again, and everybody, we're hoping to have this this fall. Mm-hmm. Again, just it's right now it's spreadsheeting. This is good to go. I think we have minor like minor silk changes. Um, just the white writing on there is all we're going to change. But the hard work seems to be exactly what we want, and we have no room to anything else anyway. So, <laughs> so that's just it's getting quotes, putting together kits, getting things manufactured, and waiting the eight weeks to get them in hand. Right. And uh, so yeah, we'll do some announcements and keep messing with these because we have nine in house right now. We're just going to play around with and make sure life is good. And maybe make one more small batch just to double check the silk again. Mm-hmm. Um, any silk changes we have, but yeah. So we'll be doing that. Follow us on social media if you don't already. Hopefully you do because you're you're here today. Um, yeah, brand dog gadgets. Because <laughs> we'll be posting these video clips on these projects and whatnot. Because why not? Um, why not? We just like to post the things we're working on because it kind of show off the things we can do. And then we'll start posting projects. And we probably will be sending out like some of the few prototypes we have to um, friends of the company, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, purple. Well, Jackie, I'm glad you like purple because uh, there's like a 50-50 chance our, our factory in China is going to mess up and give us purple, which is why our first Arduino, our, our, our robotics boards were all purple oh, because yeah. Uh, yeah. we sent the prototype. This is a funny, funny story. Last funny story. We sent them a prototype for reference. Like, here, this is a one that's finished. This is like good, just hand-soldered. But, of course, it was a purple board because it was from oshpark.com, and they make purple PCBs for prototyping. And even though, like, our data sheets, everything said green. The board is yeah. green because we everything is a color scheme in our crazy circuit system. Outputs, like, LEDs are black. Inputs are red. They copied the purple of the prototype board that we sent them. So the first thousand we made were all purple. It's a good thing you didn't want a uh, Stonehenge built, you know, drawn from a little napkin, and I would have made it 12 inches tall. <laughs> yeah, Thank Pete. you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm here all week. Pete, much much like that, you know, our board's <laughs> pins do go up to eleven. Wow, um, they do. They Indeed. do go up to eleven. Okay, uh, not enough Spinal Tap references. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, um, so green will probably be green, Jackie, because green. greens we do all of our our uh, our programmable boards. We, we like to be green around here. Well, like our Blink Fade board, yeah. a- anything that's any sort of programmable board. Um, the classic is, PCB is, color is green. I mean. And purple is usually what we use for connectors, like our screen yeah. terminals. Um, we just like to keep things in like a color scheme because we can. Uh, power's orange. We only really have one power board anyway. It's our our, uh, our CR two or three two battery holder is oh, yeah. is orange. And you can also tell if you look at the parts close enough, you can find out uh, like which manufacturing run they were because the red is always slightly different from other reds. Yeah. Like sometimes the color is just a little different. How do you know? Yeah, that's right. Because I'm colorblind. <laughs> um, it's, Did it's someone a tell shape. you that? Yes, repeatedly. All right. But anyway, so uh, we're going to do this. And again, like we have, our NeoPixel board is also a new board from us. Mm-hmm. And I think the one other board I want to make after the NeoPixel potentiometer, which I don't have on the table here, mm-hmm. is we actually have a dark de- little dark detecting analog circuit oh, board. Yeah. Um, very simple, like a two by three size. Just simple, simple dark detecting for basic circuitry things. You know, turn off the light, LED comes on. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. Uh, that's another board we've been kicking around prototype form for ages. Really, it's just the, the cost of manufacturing um, and then working these parts into our kits because I, all the cart people don't buy a ton of our parts. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I wish people did, but they don't. Um, most of our parts go out in kits and we sell a lot of kits. Um, so I want to make sure that when we get our pricing on kits a bit lower due to larger manufacturing runs, tariffs go away, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, look, I have like another $2 to play with in our margins. Let's yeah. throw in more parts. Yeah. And that's what we typically have been doing for the past uh, year or two as we've moved our production to China, um, done larger production runs. We just, we've thrown in more components into kits just to make them a better value. Uh, and so we'll probably end up doing that with uh, the NeoPixels and the potentiometers. Yeah. And when things get a little bit better, like lack of tariffs, <laughs> Yay! Because everything we touch is a tariff now. Uh, we'll probably get those uh, those uh, dark detecting boards made up. Yeah. But this is the big one, and yeah, we gotta make up kits and stuff. But anywho, any questions? Email us. We'll be posting more projects on social yeah. media. Some of these projects here we haven't posted yet because um, we're just kind of kicking around literally this morning. Like we put a couple of these together this morning. Um, Josh, what do we got happening next week? Um, we are doing back things. On Tuesday. Are we back on Tuesday? We're back on Tuesday. Okay. 
I think we're supposed to be doing something with Make, but they haven't told me what we're doing yet, so I, I don't that know. That would be Wednesday, though, right? Yeah. Tuesday, isn't Tuesday the ambulance? Or no? Tuesday, we're going to do the ambulance. Yes, yes. okay. Um, and Wednesday, we're going to be doing uh, maybe something with Make on yeah. their feed. Thursday, we're supposed to have a guest, but I haven't heard from her in a while. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to find out, because we right. don't know what's going on. Oh, one last thing, too, because I totally didn't mention this, because, yay. So we're doing every, all this stuff on Lego, mm-hmm. if anybody actually cares. This is all like Lego, or this is knockoff Lego from a company here in Wisconsin. Uh, brick Peg. Get okay to mention them. <laughs> Strictlybricks.com. <laughs> okay. okay. They're nice. Okay, um, good. You've got these off Amazon, but they're here in Wisconsin, too. Uh, these also work really well on paper. And I know a while back, oh, yeah. Pete actually made up a couple demos just with a micro bit and our tape running off of here to paper mm-hmm. and regular LEDs. To have a bunch of regular LEDs on their components, you can just run off of here just over the top. And you're good. Or if you want to make it a little more permanent, you can loop the tape on the inside, especially with the eighth-inch tape. Mm-hmm. But also the quarter-inch tape also works to a degree as well. And you can also uh, use these for conductive sewing, although the fact that it's vertical doesn't really yeah. lend much use Maybe to Maybe on that. top of a hat. Uh, something <laughs> like that. I mean, this, this would be a little more appropriate since it lays flat for yeah. conductive sewing. But then again, conductive sewing is such a niche thing anyway but yeah. this stuff works on paper too mm-hmm. and paper-based versions of stuff is pretty darn easy to do and um the cool thing with paper is you can print it out and then that can yep. be your template that you work on it's perfect right it, it, yeah just do it on the paper so yeah. anywho so i would keep forgetting to point that out because we'd like to do the lego because it's a little better format it's a little more grid based it looks a little yeah. cleaner for videos and presentation but paper works also equally well. Mm-hmm. Actually, the nice thing about Lego is, too, you can always peel the tape back up. It's a little more forgiving because yep. it's, it's plastic. Versus you put tape on paper, it's, you can't peel it back up again. Right. But who cares? You're just making a quick little circuit for a demo or something. But, yeah, paper works really well for this. Or on a wall mm-hmm. um, works well. We had some silicon Lego tape we got um, oh, yeah, just yeah. off of eBay ages ago. Stick that to the wall as like a mounting point for this. Then just run tape on the wall for things. That's what we do mm-hmm. for our sound wall. But anyway, enough of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. we're done. Yeah. We're done. So happy Friday, everybody. Any questions, email us. We'll be showing more of these off as things come along. But yep, this prototype boards. We're really, really proud of these that they're turning out well. Thank you very much. And have a good weekend, Memorial Day weekend. And we'll catch you next week uh, with some weird things happening. But roll All credits, right. Pete. There yeah. we go. Friday. Thanks for watching. Please visit browndoggadgets.com for parts, projects, and curriculum. Follow us on social media at Brown Dog Gadgets. Check out our live streams at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you next time.